Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why I don't invest in single Chinese stocks. It's a question that comes up in the comments quite a bit because people ask my opinion on certain Chinese stocks and uh, I don't invest in them, so it's hard for me to give a clear answer. So today I'm gonna to share all the reasons why I don't invest in Chinese stocks. But keep in mind, it's just an opinion or an, even an investing preference. You know, not everybody invests in copper or oil or things like that. So this is just one segment of the investing world that I steer clear of. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections, they're just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research and due diligence before investing in any stock. And of course, if you like stock market analysis and personal finance videos, and I invite you to subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Thank you to everybody who has helped the channel grow so far. All right, so the first most obvious reason that I stay away from Chinese stocks is just the political climate that's going on right now. Obviously, President Trump has had uh, quite the disdain uh, for China and our current trade agreements that we're going in. And we've basically seen four years of a back and forth uh, between the United States and China on you know tariffs and cutting back on services and accusations and whatnot um, and trump's made some pretty big threats uh, through the press anyway about delisting stocks and possibly banning certain companies uh, from america and quite frankly that's not the kind of uncertainty that i care for too much when i'm, in, I'm investing in companies uh, you don't want to wake up on any day uh, and see one of your stocks is under investigation by the SEC, or there's accusations of fraud, or just quite frankly, it gets delisted from the stock market. Uh, there's enough challenges with investing that I don't need those kind of thunderstorms hanging over the stocks that I own. This article here came out in August 20th of 2020, and the United States was telling college uh, endowment funds to avoid Chinese stocks. And bottom line, you can see in the two orange boxes, but a senior official in the Trump administration warned colleges against investing in Chinese stocks in order to avoid measures that could see such equities listed within the U.S. kicked out of domestic stock exchanges. So that's basically delisted, right? So even if you owned a Chinese company that was traded on a United States stock exchange, uh, there was a time back in August where the government was saying, uh, you may wanna let those go or swap out of them because uh, we just don't know where this is going. Then in the bottom box there, the Trump administration has looked to limit US investments into China as part of the intensifying tensions between Beijing and Washington which has threatened business, finance, and trade relations between the two economic heavyweights. Now, after August, of course, we went into uh, election mode and we have our own problems with COVID and everything else. So I'm not sure how much of this is still an issue, but I did feel like it was in the news quite a bit. Everywhere in the back half of 2018, up to, you know, really right now, there's always been something to, on the China trade front. And if you go back to the fourth quarter of 2018, you'll see the stock market actually crashed. And most of that came uh, from concerns about trade because that's when things really started to ramp up on the kind of anti-China sentiment. All right, so reason number two that I steer clear of Chinese stocks right now is just because the accounting standards are different than we have here in America. When you purchase a stock on an American stock exchange, there are certain auditing principles that have to be passed uh, or else the company actually gets in trouble. Those protections, of course, were built uh, to protect investors, particularly small-time investors like me, uh, from getting scammed on overinflated numbers, etc. Now you might think if you have a Chinese company that's traded on an American stock exchange that you're safe because they have to pass those same accounting principles. And you are correct that they are supposed to pass those same accounting principles. But what we've come to see uh, over the last, honestly, four or five years is that it is very hard to audit the auditors of Chinese companies. So every publicly traded company 
has to have a third party audit of their sales numbers. Um, and that's just a measure here in America to protect everybody, uh, including the government, so that they can get the right amount of taxes. But just because you have a third party auditor, the government also comes in and audits the auditors to make sure that there's no funny business uh, between the two companies, right? So theoretically, I could hire an auditor, but if that auditor was my friend or I gave him or her some sort of incentive, uh, they could play with the numbers a little bit and then everything would be fine. But if the government comes in and audits the auditors, then you start to have a little bit of a hole in the strategy. And one of the issues that's gotten a lot more attention this year is the fact that China is not allowing government auditors, United States auditors, to audit their auditors, if you can follow that. This statement here by the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board pretty much lays it out. Positions taken by Chinese authorities impede our ability to oversee registered audit firms in mainland China and Hong Kong. Specifically, these positions impair our ability to conduct inspections and investigations of the audits of public companies. This affects our ability to oversee two types of audit work on behalf of investors in U.S. capital markets. Number one, audit work performed by the principal signing auditor. And number two, referred work which is work performed by an audit firm in support of an audit report for a public company. Okay, so that's a lot of use of the word audit in there. Uh, but basically, even though that we have American-based auditing firms, they all have offices in China if they have Chinese clients. And because China is not exactly right next door, um, and the fact that Chinese government officials have made it hard for American-based regulators to check on these companies, it's raised quite a few concerns. Then you throw in the fact that many of the primary auditors outsource portions of their work and accept that into their general audit, um, and the American investigators have not been able to track down all the information they want to see out of all those third-party auditors. So in a nutshell, the difference between uh, what's going on in China and what goes on over here from an auditing perspective is that basically these accounting boards have a lot better access to audit the auditors. All right, and reason number three that I don't invest in Chinese stocks is just the pervasiveness of headlines like this that come out all the time. And I'm going to show three or four of these to you. I think we all know about Luck and Coffee. They were supposed to be, you know, the Chinese Starbucks. And ultimately, we found out that they inflated uh, their sales prices across several quarters, and the stock tanked, and people who were in uh, and even up big on Luck and Coffee essentially lost most of their investment. TAL Education, this is some sort of Chinese tutoring group. And while this one wasn't as bad, uh, here you had an employee conspired with external vendors to wrongly inflate light class sales by forging contracts and other documentations. Light class sales accounted for about three to 4% of the company's total estimated revenue for fiscal 2020. Now, of course, this stuff can happen in any country, but it does kind of raise your ears every time um, it seems to happen in China because it's just a history of headlines like these. In August of 2020, there was an SEC probe on the sort of Netflix of China, which is that IQIYI. And I think that this one came out as unsubstantiated several uh, weeks after, but it basically came up from a short seller, Wolfpack Research, that the company was issuing fraudulent financial statements. And this is a popular stock because if you can think about the Netflix of China and how many people that could do, and if you compare it roughly to, let's say, the Baidu, which is the Google of China, uh, you can see why it would be a popular investment. So when you started to see potential uh, fraudulent financial statements, everybody's ears perked up. Now, again, I don't think that this is settled yet, but I do remember a press release that came out uh, where the company said they were nearing completion and no fraudulent 
uh, things had been found. All right, and then the last one on here is a very popular stock right now, which is NEO. And there's nothing wrong with NEO. They are not uh, making fraudulent sales, at least not at this point. Uh, but one of the things about NEO that folks kind of forget about is they almost went out of business in February. And you can see in that first orange box at the top, the EV startup weathered the pandemic, but the cost of its bailout is becoming clear. And that is the Chinese government had to bail out NEO, which is something we've done here in America, obviously. But now what you have that's just a little bit funny is a billion dollars worth of Chinese interest in the NEO company. If you go down to that second paragraph, for their billion dollar investment, NEO had to commit its core business and assets in China, including vehicle research and development, supply chain, sales and service, and NEO power. NEO also has to invest around 600 million of its own money into NEO China. Then at the bottom, on the top of all that, the HIFI Investor Group now owns 24% of NEO China. They did this in a very unique way, though. So if you see on the very last line that I highlighted, NEO Incorporated is what trades on the New York Stock Exchange. And so the company made sure to tell its shareholders on recent earnings call that they will continue owning the controlling stake of NEO China for the long term. So basically coming out of their bailout, NEO had to make two companies, uh, NEO China, where they could sort of keep this billion dollars of investment. And then they have NEO Incorporated, which is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, um, I think there's enough people on to NEO that uh, there's probably nothing fishy there, but it feels a little odd to me, and that's one of many reasons why I am not interested in, in investing in NEO stock, at least not at this point, uh, despite all the great headlines and news stories I've seen about it. All right, so bottom line for me, I gave you a few examples of why I just don't feel comfortable with Chinese stocks right now. Now, to be fair, I'm probably overthinking it, and maybe I've got the tinfoil hat on. Um, but while Donald Trump is still in office, um, I'm staying away from it. We'll just have to see how Biden approaches China trade to see if there's any change um, in the relationship. But certainly through the beginning of 2021, uh, I think the political tensions are a little high. And the other thing with investing in Chinese stocks or foreign stocks in general is there's not like there's a lack of opportunity for USA stocks, right? So for me, I don't own every stock that I follow and I don't own every stock that I'm interested in. So I don't really feel this like shortage of opportunity to make investing gains in American companies. Uh, so it makes the choice to kind of keep it in the homeland a lot easier. Frankly, I would probably feel the same way if I was a Chinese investor who was seeing all this stuff going on. I probably wouldn't spend too much of my time, money, and effort on American stocks while this whole political spat is going on. Now, if I do decide to get back into Chinese stocks, it will likely be uh, what I did last time back in 2018, and that is the K-Web um, Chinese internet stock ETF. Lots of great names in there. I owned it for a while, really liked it uh, until I got spooked with all the stuff going on. If I went back into Chinese stocks, I would almost for sure buy that ETF uh, to represent uh, you know, a small portion of my portfolio, just enough to get some international exposure. But it's unlikely that I would purchase, say, like Alibaba, as a standalone stock in my portfolio. All right, guys, so those are my reasons for avoiding Chinese stocks, at least for now. Thank you for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. We will see you on the next video.